Have you ever wondered how the deep state and corruption have subtly yet significantly shaped the landscape of German politics? If so, you're in the right place. Today, we journey through the intricate maze of German politics where the specter of corruption and the specter of deindustrialization lurk in the shadows. Our story begins in the post-war era, a time when Germany was rising from the ashes of World War II and the deep state was carving its niche within the political framework. The deep state, a term referring to a network of individuals and institutions operating outside the democratically elected government, began to wield its influence. It was during this time that the first seeds of corruption were sown, subtly infiltrating the system. Moving forward into the 1960s and 1970s, the German economy was flourishing and it seemed that the country was on the brink of a golden age. However, beneath the surface, the roots of corruption were spreading, entangling the very fabric of German politics. The climax arrived in the 1980s. The deep state, now firmly embedded within the political structure, began to exert its influence more openly. The result was a wave of corruption scandals that rocked the nation, exposing the rot within the system. Have you ever wondered if the CO2 narrative is a facade to deindustrialize Germany? In recent years, the CO2 narrative has taken center stage in global conversations. It's a tale of human-induced climate change driven by excessive carbon dioxide emissions. This narrative has been embraced by many, shaping policies and influencing decisions. But a growing number of skeptics are questioning its validity and implications. At the heart of this skepticism is Germany, a nation known for its industrial prowess. The country has been steadily transitioning toward renewable energy, driven by the CO2 narrative. But some argue this is less about saving the planet and more about deindustrializing Germany. Deindustrialization, the decline of manufacturing and industrial sectors, is often seen as a natural progression toward a service based economy. But what if it's not just an economic evolution? What if it's a deliberate strategy masked by the CO2 narrative? Skeptics point to the potential economic and social consequences. The industrial sector has long been the backbone of Germany's economy, providing employment and contributing significantly to the country's GDP. Its decline could lead to job losses, economic instability, and social upheaval. Furthermore, deindustrialization could weaken Germany's position on the global stage. The country's industrial sector is a key player in global supply chains, and its products are renowned worldwide for their quality and innovation. Curtailing this sector could undermine Germany's influence and competitiveness. Yet, the CO2 narrative continues to drive the push towards renewable energy, with many viewing it as the only viable solution to mitigate climate change. Skeptics, however, caution against a blind leap into renewables, citing potential challenges and the high cost of such a transition. So, we're left with a conundrum. On one hand, there's the widely accepted CO2 narrative pushing us towards a cleaner, greener future. On the other, there's the risk of deindustrialization and its potential fallout. But what if there's more to this story? What if renewable energy, hailed as the solution, actually presents its own set of challenges? Renewable energy a beacon of hope or a costly illusion let's dive into the financial implications of renewable energy comparing the costs of wind and solar energy with traditional energy sources when we think about renewable energy we often picture a world powered by the sun and wind with power plants and gas guzzlers a thing of the past however this vision doesn't account for the financial realities that come with renewable energy let's start with the cost of production the cost to generate electricity from wind and solar energy has been decreasing, making it competitive with fossil fuels in many areas. But this doesn't tell the whole story. Initial setup costs for renewable energy sources are significantly higher than for traditional power plants. This is due to the expensive and complex technology required to harness wind and solar power. Then, there are the hidden costs. Infrastructure upgrades are needed to accommodate these new energy sources. This includes everything from constructing new power lines to upgrading the electrical grid to handle the intermittent nature of renewable energy. And let's not forget about maintenance. Wind turbines and solar panels require regular upkeep, and replacing parts can be expensive. 
These costs add up over time and are often overlooked in the initial cost analysis. Reliability is another factor that can't be ignored. Unlike coal or natural gas, which can be stored and used when needed, wind and solar energy are dependent on the weather. If the sun isn't shining or the wind isn't blowing, energy production drops. This means we still need traditional power plants as a backup, contributing to the overall cost. Lastly, there's the environmental cost. While renewable energy sources produce less carbon dioxide, they still have an environmental impact. The production of solar panels and wind turbines requires mining for rare earth metals, which can be destructive to ecosystems. As we can see, renewable energy isn't as straightforward or as affordable as it may initially appear. Wind energy is often seen as a green solution, but at what cost to our environment and communities? When we think of wind energy, we picture towering turbines spinning gracefully in the breeze, harnessing the power of nature to light up our homes and cities. But like every coin, wind energy has a flip side. Let's take a look at land use. Wind farms require vast stretches of terrain, impacting not only the landscape but also the ecosystems that thrive within. It's not uncommon for forests to be cleared to make way for wind turbines, a practice that directly contradicts our global efforts to preserve and expand our green cover. Then there's noise pollution. Those spinning blades aren't as silent as you might think. The constant hum and whoosh can reach up to 60 decibels, comparable to the noise level in a busy office. This can be a real nuisance for local communities living in close proximity to wind farms. Speaking of local communities, they often bear the brunt of these projects, homes shadowed by giant turbines, landscapes altered, and tranquil rural life disrupted. The economic benefits are often promised, but these don't always materialize. Jobs can be temporary, and the wealth doesn't always trickle down to the local level. Now let's spare a thought for our feathered friends. Wind turbines can pose a real threat to birds and bats. The blades create a vortex that can pull these creatures in, leading to a high rate of fatalities. This impact on wildlife is a significant environmental concern that's not often talked about. Lastly, the disposal of wind turbines is another challenge. The blades are made of composite materials that aren't easily recyclable, leading to a waste problem when they reach the end of their lifespan. These are the often overlooked consequences of wind energy, hidden behind the green label. It's essential for us to consider these aspects when planning our renewable energy future, ensuring that the solutions we choose are truly sustainable for all aspects of our planet and communities. The high cost of renewable energy, is it worth the price we pay? Let's delve into the nitty-gritty of the economic burden renewable energy imposes on consumers and the economy. When we flip the switch, we want the lights to come on, right? But when we're powered by renewable energy, that convenience comes with a heftier price tag. First, let's talk about our energy bills. With renewable energy, we're not just paying for the electricity we use, we're also footing the bill for the infrastructure needed to generate that energy. Solar panels, wind turbines, and other renewable energy technologies are expensive to manufacture, install, and maintain. That cost trickles down to us, the consumers, resulting in higher energy bills. But the financial burden doesn't stop there. The government steps in to subsidize the cost of renewable energy production, trying to make it more competitive with traditional energy sources. But where does that money come from? Well, it's siphoned off from our taxes. So we're essentially paying twice, once via our energy bills and again through our tax dollars. Now let's contrast this with the lower cost and greater reliability of traditional energy sources. Coal, natural gas, and nuclear power have been the backbone of our energy system for decades. These sources are not only cheaper to produce, but they also provide a steady, reliable supply of energy. Rain or shine, wind or still, we can count on these sources to keep the lights on. So, we're left with a paradox. On one hand, we have renewable energy, which is expensive and somewhat unreliable, yet environmentally friendly. On the other hand, we have traditional energy sources which are cheaper and more reliable, but come with environmental concerns. Navigating this paradox is no easy task. It requires a careful balance of economic and environmental considerations, while also keeping in mind the needs and constraints of consumers and the economy. It seems that the high cost of renewable energy may outweigh its benefits, but that's a decision we all have to make together. As we step into the future, we must ask ourselves, are we willing to pay the price for a cleaner, greener world? Then came the era of deindustrialization, championed by the Green Party in the late 20th and early 21st centuries. 
The party's policies, which were driven by a desire to transition towards a more sustainable and environmentally friendly economy, led to a significant decrease in industrial production. This shift, while noble in its intentions, came with its own set of challenges. Job losses soared, communities crumbled, and the economy took a hit, casting a shadow over the future of the German industrial sector. Now, in the present day, the impact of these historical developments is clearly visible. The deep state continues to permeate German politics and corruption scandals are not uncommon. Deindustrialization, while slowing down, still poses a significant challenge for a country that once prided itself on its industrial prowess. To sum up, the rise of corruption and deindustrialization in German politics is a complex saga, one that is intertwined with the influence of the deep state. It's a story that begins in the post-war era, reaches its climax in the 1980s and continues to unfold today. The repercussions of these developments are far-reaching, affecting not just the political landscape, but the economic and social fabric of the country as well. As we journey through the maze of German politics, it's crucial to remember that the specter of corruption and deindustrialization still lurks in the shadows. So, is the CO2 narrative a reality, or is it a ploy for deindustrialization and a costly shift to renewable energy? That's the question we've been examining together. We've delved into the heart of the CO2 narrative, a topic surrounded by significant skepticism. We've explored the notion that this narrative might be a strategic move towards deindustrialization rather than an urgent call to address climate change. It's a theory that challenges the mainstream perspective, and that's why it's important to engage with it critically. We've also taken a closer look at the cost and impact of renewable energy, specifically in the context of Germany. It's no secret that the transition to renewable energy sources like wind and solar power comes with a hefty price tag, but are the long-term benefits worth this initial investment? That's a question that continues to divide opinions, and it's a debate we should all be a part of. Additionally, we've discussed the potential consequences of deindustrialization in Germany. As one of Europe's industrial powerhouses, what would this mean for the country's economy, its people, and its position on the global stage? It's a complex issue with no easy answers. As we grapple with these questions, it's essential to remember that every narrative, every theory, every statistic we encounter is part of a much larger, more intricate puzzle. The energy landscape is evolving and with it, our understanding of what's at stake. What we've aimed to do in this discussion is not to provide definitive answers, but to encourage critical thinking and informed dialogue. The stakes are high and the decisions we make today will shape our world for generations to come. And so, as we've seen the truth is often more complex than the narrative, it's crucial to consider all sides of the story when it comes to our energy future. Because ultimately, it's not just about the energy we use, but the kind of world we want to leave behind. It's a story that serves as a sobering reminder of the challenges that lie ahead and the need for transparency, accountability and sustainable development in the political sphere. By understanding the past, we can better navigate the present and shape a future that is free from the shackles of corruption and the pitfalls of deindustrialization. A future where the voice of the people reigns supreme and the deep state is a relic of the past.